Okay, this is the afternoon game. Washington and the 49ers. Actually, there's another game on the other channel. I'm over here at uh, Ramada in Reading. And I feel good. I feel damn fucking good in a lot of ways. Um, I didn't even have a lot of beer yet. You know, I slept during part of the early game. I'm just tired and all. Oh, this is good. The lemonade. Got lemonade. But I want to explain a little bit about why I feel good. It's not the beer. Although, you know, you know, been a beer drinker my whole adult life. Boy. Got the Raider game on the other channel right here. And the Colts. Um, the Cowboys won big earlier, 30-7. to seven. Andy Dalton played his former team, the Bengals. And in this Niner game, Alex Smith is playing his former team, the Niners. And I think there's another game or two where your significant stars play their former teams. But I'm going to turn this down a little bit, just a little bit for now. I'm not going to make this long. I'm not going to make this long. Um, this is exactly what I needed, though. This is exactly what I needed coming from Seattle. And, uh, I lived for a year in Seattle, and it felt like three weeks, you know. Just, just the nature of how we process experiences and stuff like that. It felt like a vacation more than it did that I was living there. For some reason. Maybe because that's how it was the first time around when I was in Seattle in 97. I was there for a little more than a month. Um, now the whole thing on this is I have a communications degree. And part of the degree, you know, we learn different uh, conceptual models to understand what's going on in life. And one of them... I can't remember the name of it because they all have different names like the Sapir Whorf hypothesis, etc., the Kiersey Bates um, personality analysis, etc. But I can't remember the one having to do with control. Control. And that's what's very key here is control. Um, but there was an assessment, and you know, you go through the survey and you mark this answer for that, this answer for that, you know, do you mind this, do you prefer that, and all that, and they tell you, on a scale of one to nine, how much control you need in life, and I, I scored a nine, I scored a nine out of nine, about when I'm happy, I need a nine, I need to control my own life, and we lost our house in the mid-90s. And a lot of my control on life slipped through my fingers, you know, and I don't see myself at fault, no matter what other people might uh, say out there. I'm, you know, I've done countless videos on, on this, but uh, an ex-girlfriend of mine, two of them actually, <laughs> um, they were... Uh, students under the same teacher in this communication studies department and she was a mentor of mine and she recommended me to a college in Claremont and I got to the college and I got a bachelor's degree there. but I took her to homecoming and I liked her I liked her a lot and then you know we we split up it was amicable and I liked her as a person I liked her boyfriend you know we all worked together you know I liked him as a person we went to a concert together Motley Crue concert together and I liked her boyfriend's sister who also moved to Seattle and we we're friends you know we we're friends and we all worked at the same pizza store we're talking about you know both of my ex-girlfriends my ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend and his sister and two of 
the other girl's sisters and it was it was just crazy and you know my best friend and my best friend's brother and another friend and it was just wild it was just wild how many people were working at that pizza store um i just want to emphasize that's a damn good this is good i'm gonna have another drink so uh anyway she she was in this class at a different time than me and on a scale of one to nine she she rated it as a one and the only way you could ever grade as a one in my opinion it, it, it wasn't necessarily taught in a class i just put two and two, two together is if you have benevolent people in your life if you have people that are in control and let's suppose you're a little kid and your mom is dressing you and you know you're always getting complimented on your outfit stuff stuff like that your parents are taking you to Disneyland you know hey where are we going oh it's a surprise and you want to go to Disneyland and if you have benevolent people with good ideas and they're on the pulse of society I could see where you would be a one out of a on a scale of nine you know and at some point in my life, for whatever reason, for me to be happy, I, I, I need to control my circumstance, whatever my circumstance is. And when we lost our house in the mid-90s, I lost that control. And, you know, I was at the mercy of the world around me. And it hurt, and it was frustrating. Because no matter how hard I worked, blue collar stuff in a warehouse, uh, as a student at the college and going to calculus and, you know, doing well, you know, intellectually and all that. And no matter how hard I worked and how much I thought I accomplished, I was still at the mercy of, of the world around me. Um, I'm going to check real quick. I have two minutes. Um, I'm probably going to upload these videos. Um, I did a series leaving Seattle and there's a couple of these videos now that are 10 minute videos where I'm unwinding and processing so about a couple of minutes I aim for 10 minutes so since 97 though since 1997 when I first went to Seattle I wanted to come back to live and I did that and I was here for a year I was you know, in Seattle for a full year, I'm actually in Reading now, and I, you know, my mind's still saying I'm here now, but, um, the point is, I finally regained control of my life, and that's the point, that is the fucking point, and it doesn't matter how it turned out, with this COVID thing, uh, a lot of my options were limited, but my intentions, my intentions were very noble, and strong and benevolent. They really were. When I first got to Kent in December, I wound up starting the work in January and I was working a lot of overtime. And I thought I could send airline tickets to all my loved ones. You know, it's going to be 165 bucks per ticket, per round trip ticket through Southwest. And my 50th birthday is coming up in May of 2021. And I figured. All right, I'm going to bring all my friends and family up here, as many that want to come, and we'll rent a hall, we'll have a good time. And then the COVID thing happened. And I bought tickets to an XFL game. Seattle had a team called the Dragons. And everything shut down about a week and a half before the game. So it doesn't matter how things turned out in Seattle. That's my point. The point is I regained control of my life again. That for the first time since the mid-90s, I was making the majority of the decisions around me, you know? Um, so anyhow, this is coming on 10 minutes. And this might seem weird to some of the people that might watch it. I'm not sure. I expect a lot of zero views. I, I really do expect a lot of zero views. Um, I posted a seven-part series on Leaving Seattle. Some of them have one view. Some of them have two views. I think one has three views. I'm not sure. 
And it's not about views right now. It's about processing the experience. But as I head back to California or Las Vegas or wherever I wind up, I got to relive, you know, uh, the experience I had to some degree. And, you know, I got control back. And that was nice. So we'll leave it at that for now.